So here's a movie I'm betting a lot of my subscribers haven't seen, but I've been holding off on doing this movie long enough. War of the Worlds, it's a 2005 disaster movie by Steven Spielberg, and is rather loosely based off of the H.G. Wells novel of the same name, and the old film adaptation of said book. And I must say, people really seem to hate this Spielberg movie, like, it's a good concept and an all-around okay movie, except it misses something crucial, that being, um, a story that flows properly. This film is so broken, and most people find the two kids quite annoying. They also think that the ending is a blatant cop-out. And although the movie flounders in its second half, I've still got a theory that wraps up many of the plot holes this movie produced. Because this film may lack a story with the main characters, but the aliens are the ones with the true mysteries surrounding them. Hello, I'm The Theorizer, and, you know, if Spielberg didn't change everything from the original story, then things would be a lot easier here. But he actually altered so much that the whole backstory and motives and everything about the aliens was totally changed. They aren't even regarded as Martians in this one, though based off of the red they spread, it's still possible. But the fact that he changed so much means we can't look to the book and other films for a whole lot of support regarding the history of these aliens, which is why I have some pretty good theories about what they're really trying to do. So in Steven's version, all we are told is that mysterious aliens have been watching us for probably thousands of years, preparing to attack and take over our world. They visited here before us and they buried, oh I don't know, thousands of these huge machines under the ground. They call them tripods. One day, a huge electrical storm fires up around the Earth, and the aliens ride small capsules down through the lightning. The lightning strikes them through the ground and down deep into their tripods, which they then operate out of the ground. They then use superheated death rays to zap a ton of people, causing humans, who are mostly made of water, to instantly evaporate, even leaving behind their clothing. Mostly, their motives don't change, except later in the movie, they begin to capture humans and use their blood to fertilize the Earth with vines that would make it habitable for them. This is their main plan. Eventually, they are undone by something they did not foresee. The microbacteria all over the Earth, which humans spread, was too much for them to handle. They had literally zero immunity to all of the sicknesses and germs spread by humans that they began to get rapidly sick, killing them all off. And that's why people deem this film a cop-out. How would such intelligent alien life forget the simple fact that germs could kill them? I have a bunch of answers. I also can wrap up the plot hole of why they evaporate some people and take the blood of others. I can even wrap up the big plot hole that angers most people, why didn't the aliens come sooner so that it would be easier to exterminate all of the humans. And I might even be able to convince you that Spielberg's version of the germ death cop-out makes much more sense than you might think. Panspermia is the theory that life didn't start on Earth, but rather that it came here from elsewhere when either a comet or a meteorite hit us. The foreign object in question was coming from a different galaxy with habitable life. It's the theory that life was placed here, intentionally or unintentionally. And while it's heavily criticized, it is only a hypothesis and, well, it currently exists as a fictional scenario since it's not been proven. And movie makers love this kind of thing, basing movies off of scientific fiction, giving movies things like Aliens, which are currently just fictional too, giving movies things like fully autonomous AI, also fictional. They tend to draw from proposed scientific hypotheses just because they can. Movies are not the real world, and panspermia is one famous, damn interesting concept, but I want to propose something about how it may relate to War of the Worlds. You see, for two, maybe three years, I have had this nagging theory of mine that these aliens were the ones who brought life to Earth in the first place. As their planet slowly overpopulated, they waited out in space and observed their project, us, for thousands of years, watching the life evolve and grow into humans. They're like gods, evil gods, who stand up and vaporize people like they have the divine abilities of judgment. Or I suppose a better comparison is this. 
They are slaughterhouse farmers, watching the animals perfect themselves to the point at which they are in high enough numbers to use meaningfully. They are taking their sweet time, waiting for the population to grow big enough so that they will be able to move in and take all of that blood. It isn't a war, it also isn't an extermination, it's a set plan. However, immediately after they move down into the tripods, they can tell something isn't right. My theory? Blood types. Many people are evaporated while the aliens scramble to keep searching for specific humans. They went into Tom Cruise's little basement hideout three times before finally finding him. They're desperate for certain people, the ones they capture. Perhaps AB positive or some other blood type, but they seem to be rather selective when it comes to their blood and captives. And notice something equally strange. They captured Dakota Fanning and then Tom Cruise, daughter and father. Blood types do have a tendency to be hereditary, and here's why I think the germs killed the aliens. The aliens weren't careless. They knew that only certain blood types could sustain them. Unlike real life, human blood had diseases and bad conditions in it, but by the end of the film, they began to get desperate. Sure, the air and water and everything else had germs, but blood has some truly serious stuff in it. Maybe not usually germs or bacteria, but blood carries lots of things, and that was their downfall. They took people unsuitable for the fertilization job, causing dead vines. The blood they gathered into orange liquid began to severely sicken them, to the point of absolute death. So, what do you think of that little theory? That they brought life to Earth to slaughter it, but the blood was the biggest cause of their downfall. I've been building upon it for quite some time now, and the reason I felt I needed to share it is because the other films in the original book simply don't connect to this one in these deeper ways. Besides, when I say War of the Worlds, people almost always think of the 2005 Tom Cruise movie, so I thought I might as well just go ahead and devise a theory on a movie which has some amazing scenes, but terrible form as a whole. I think this film does have a terrible reputation, but not to the point that it should. If you go on certain forums, you'll find discussions from people when they originally watched the movie and it came in theaters, and the viewers did enjoy it for the most part, except for the fact that there was annoying kids in the movie. It's just gathered a lot of negativity over the years. But before I retreat for today, I want to answer the question to one final plot hole. Something that ruined the movie for most people. How in the hell did Robbie survive climbing over a hill as it was being nuked by aliens? Like, what happened? Was he hiding in this flaming car as it went down? Was he terrified when he looked over the hill so he immediately ran? Maybe. But I find it most likely that Robbie was actually immediately snatched up by the aliens and put into one of the cages. Not only would that keep him protected from the explosion, but if he could hold out long enough in the cage, then he'd be free when all the aliens died. And if you consider my theory of blood types and consider how they're hereditary, boom. You know those aliens would be desperately all over this kid the second they saw him. I dislike it when people sum things up to plot holes Theories are far better in these cases. Until next time though, I'm the Theorizer.